There are three things that you generally need to know about the severance agreements in California. Number one, when you sign a severance agreement and release of all claims, you will normally waive all the known claims and also all the unknown claims. This means that if, let's say, a month after your termination and after signing that agreement, you learn, let's say, from one of your former co-workers that the real reason for your termination was your race, your age, your sexual orientation, or any of the other illegal reasons, you will not be able to go back and tell your employer that you changed your mind, you want to renege on that severance agreement, you're even willing to return that money that they paid you, and you decided to file a claim because of this new information that you learned. You cannot do that because you waived all the known claims and also all the unknown claims. And this makes sense because when employers pay severance, they want to get a total peace of mind. They want to make sure that that employee never comes back with any claims and that the parties are completely and totally done with each other. Secondly, generally, if you are terminated for any reason other than intentional misconduct, such as making mistakes or maybe not being a team player or simply not being good enough, or if you're laid off through no fault of your own because of companies restructuring, re reduction in force, and so forth, you will generally be qualified for unemployment benefits in California, regardless of how small or large the severance payment that you are receiving will be. In other words, your severance payment does not affect your eligibility for unemployment benefits. On the other hand, if you resign and you receive severance, then you will generally not be eligible for unemployment benefits with a few very limited exceptions. And the third point is this. Generally, a severance agreement will not affect your pending long-term disability claims that are already in action and also your pending workers' comp claims that have been filed before uh, you were terminated or before you signed that severance agreement. However, to avoid any misunderstandings, it is a really good idea to include the type of language in your severance agreement that specifically excludes those claims from your release. So a simple sentence such as um, employer agrees that employee is not waiving his pending workers' comp claim or his pending disability claim will be plenty in order to make sure that there are no issues with any claims that you already have that are in progress while you're engaging in the separation process and uh, severance matter. These are the three things you should keep in mind about severance agreements. And of course, not all severance agreements and not all releases are the same. So. If you have a unique situation, if you have questions about your specific document, you should seek counsel from an experienced employment attorney who can explain to you everything you want to know and answer all your questions to make sure that you truly feel comfortable and confident signing that document uh, before you move on to the next chapter in your career. Thank you.